Well, I'm Bruce Michael Bong, and uh, I would just wish to just categorically state on the recent happenings that we have had in our country. Yeah, today we have one person being castigated morally on a moral line because it's believed that uh, he's the one castigating or bespattering all manner of tribal cards in the name of Rigadi Gachagua. But there is nothing really different that he has done so far. What we just have to put into focus is, let's be very honest and try and ask ourselves, whenever we are in an electioneering period, whenever we bring someone on board, whenever we craft coalitions in our country called Kenya, right from the year 1992 to date, everything has been based tribal. When we were talking about, uh, like in the year 2022, when we were talking about Raila merging up with Kalonzo, what did we mean? Politics is about numbers. We talk about matrix here. We believed that Kalonzo was going to come on board with the, with the Kamba votes. When we talked about Raila Amolo Dinga merging with the Mata Karua, we believed Mata Karua was to come on board with much of the Kikuyu votes. That is what was really necessary. If not, then we would ask a question that right now, if there is a possibility of William Ruto to working with, uh, say, Joho, for example, what would you expect? Can we expect Joho to bring on board the Kisi votes for William Ruto? Or do we just expect the coastal votes to come with, 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 with Joho? So that is the reality of our politics today. We cannot go and impeach someone on the balance of what is called tribalism. Well, when we were really conversing for these MPs, seeking for their support to host out Gachagua, there was that arena of meeting up with these parliamentarians in cahoots, in small, small caches, and ensuring that they are regional. We had MPs from Mount Kenya being met at a particular location where they met together, they spoke their language, and they summed it up to kick out Kachago. In Luo Nyanza, the same, same Luo Nyanza MPs were brought in a certain cache in a given hotel, and they were spoken to in Luo dialect, and they really understood their role in the house to kick out Kachagua. So you cannot use a tribalistic means to kick out someone from power, all painting him, bespattering the word he is tribal for talking about Mulema. It is very, very wrong. And let us be very objective on this. We truly believe that this is somehow like a psycho tampat. Why are we saying it's a psycho tampat? We're saying it's a psycho tampat because we know very well that there are much more important issues to be discussed in this country as we speak. Just the same way Babu Wino puts it today. We do not have to go to parliament to discuss non-issues. Because put it on four. We have a Dani here taking over everything of our country. We have read their Dani deal back to back, back to back, one page after the other. And we've come to realize that for 30 good years, a country as sovereign as Kenya, a country that is standing tall in the Horn of Africa is not going to have control over what gets into its country and what exists, uh, exists out of Kenya for the next 30 years. It's not possible. The Kenyan government is not going to control whatever gets in or out. We are putting Kenya to be a, a, a drug smuggling zone do we want to put Kenya to be an area where we deal in organ harvesting and the rest? For the next 30 good years, we are going to have a Dani run our airport. And we know very well that we are going to really lose big because, for one, we know that the Asian rates are always really soaring high. Kenya is going to lose much more of its airlines to neighboring countries. Look at what is, what is happening in Tanzania. As we are really much engrossed on selling this thing to Adani, the airport, our airspace we are selling to Adani, a country that is so sovereign, a country that has got the Air Force 
to capture and protect its territory is now today auctioning its entire airport to a foreigner, Adani. How safe are we? How safe is Kenya? And McHugh, we are also being told that we are selling off Adani, we are selling off JKIA simply because Kenya cannot raise 250 billion. Well, look at how we could really amass this money and do this thing by ourselves. If today we decide that every every budget we allocate 50 billion for the you know enhancements of JKIA, then in five years, 50 by five, we are able to amass the 250 billion. Why must we go and sell it off? And then we are being told from whichever contract they signed that seven years, for seven good years, Adani is going to manage JKIA the way it is without any other kind of renovation being done. They are managing it the way it is for seven years. Still looking on how to get the money. But me, I've only calculated to you how we are able to accumulate the 250 billion in five years to be able to make our airport look great. Why do we have to lease it off to Adani for 30 years? And then in this period of 30 years, for seven good years, they are going to deal with, that, uh, with JKIA the way it is. And yet we are able to get this money in five years. What is taking place in our country? So as we are soaring deeper onto both the political issues that are really bewildering this nation and also on the balance of financial freedom, the economic justice that so many young people in this country died for in the month of June, the year 2024. We want to say that the room is now open. We are very much grateful for the several petitions in court today. And we are also happy that the High Court pronounced itself that there are going to be a bench that is going to attach itself, engross itself fully on matters pertaining the impeachment of Deputy President Rigadi Gachagua. And I can tell you from where I sit today that Kenyans are really making the biggest mistake of their lives. And to the Gikuyu Nation, I thought you would learn your lesson from not listening to Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, who spoke to you in your own language. Today, you've ganged up again, switching the gears onto one of you called Rigadi Gachagua, impeaching Rigadi Gachagua on baseless accusations. And I tend to believe that we have all the 11 points going to be taken to the Senate, and this was done strategically, because they know that the Senate is a place, it's a house of reason, where Gachagua is going to be given his own time to actually also propel his reasons. And that is the reason why we believe that at the Senate, there's going to be a vote that is going to be cast on every other allegation. And for Gachagua to go through all the allegations and impeach, it's very difficult for now. That is the reality, even through the Senate. Though I know that the Senate, this is your greatest time to prove to the parliamentarians that you are the highest, highest lawmaking organ in this country. You, the Senate, it is your time now to prove that whatever was done by the parliamentarians is just but a booby prize in the offing. So the booby prize that we going to give to the members of parliament is something that should shame them. Try to capture these matters one after the other in a very, very nice way. And that is the only position that Kenya can find its way into the trajectory and to where we are supposed to be. We cannot be in a country where both the opposition and the government are truly working in cahoots on ensuring that the Kenyan populace are seriously betrayed and betrayed of all that they have to win as Kenyan populace. That is really not in order. And as we put it, moving forward, I see a situation where the Kavirondo politicians, by saying the Kavirondo politicians, I mean every politician from the Kisi nation, from the Lua nation and the Luo nation, they are going to regret 
what they are doing today. I can tell you they are going to regret what they are doing today because we are just but making a dictator in the office. William Ruto is going to be the greatest dictator in Africa ever seen. If we support this, then William Ruto is going to be the greatest dictator. If Rigadi Gachagua goes home, I'm telling you, then the next to be ready is someone by the name Moses Wetangula. He should be very, 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 very ready. Because this is a government that is out on blemishing people and ensuring that any potential threat is swept out. Gachagua is out. I'm telling you, even the flower girl called Kindiki is going to be out very soon. Very soon we are going to have Wetangula out and any other possible person out. And before you know it, in 15 years' time from now, we are going to have Nick Ruto as maybe the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. We just saw the daughter of the president the other day being paraded somewhere uh, that she's doing something with the military. That is not a joke. He's only testing waters. Things are coming. It's just in this melee of Gachago impeachment that we have someone from Rift Valley coming with a proposal that they need seven-year term limit. For what? For what? Everything that is happening in this country is strategic. When you talk about uh, changing the laws of the parastatals, the leasing, the buying, the selling, this has been done by our parliamentarians. And it has been done specifically to ensure that we are deprived of our national treasures. Today, by the time William Ruto is out, no one will be asking about KICC. No one will be asking about Ketraco. It is gone to Adani. No one will be asking about any other parastatal in this country. So why are we changing laws to befit the aggrandizement of someone who is in power? Why, is, why, why are we really doing that? It's really abnormerimous. We cannot take it lying down anymore. Because, come to think of it, right now, we even have another law that gives the executive powers, powers that they, that they can edge out the legislature, the provisions okay. that have been put in place by the, by the legislature. Why are we doing that? Why should we thin all our parliamentarians into a, a, a flexible number of 20 to be used by the president? Why? We have everything in full. Right now, we are aware that even the mobile transaction that is happening on M-Pesa, the other time we were complaining about Safaricom, and we told Safaricom clearly that you are messing up with our data. There seems to be a way that you are maneuvering to ensure that you collect our data with other agencies. And it is now coming out clear that all our data with, with M-Pesa Safaricom have been shared with KRA. I mean, why are all these things happening and there's no public participation? For example, why is it happening? And that's the reason why we are telling every person, including Safaricom, that things change. In the year 1995, Kodak was a company that was employing over 260,000 people and up to 93% of photos taken worldwide were taken by Kodak. And they thought that they had the best in the world. Same to you, Safaricom. All that you choose to do with this regime, being to bed with this regime, will not take you anywhere. Luckily, we've got Starlink, and everything is going to be better. We have to stand up and set our right foot forward for our country. It is one thing that we have to do. Che Guevara, who really fought for Bognia for years, and never succeeded, left a mark. We are really leading on this space to leave a mark. Thank you.